Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for spending some time uh, with us today here. Um, very excited to talk to you about uh, Amazon Workmail. My name is uh, Thomas Döhler. I'm the general manager of Amazon Workmail. And I'm here with my uh, colleague, uh, Milo Ostoho, who is uh, product manager of uh, Amazon Workmail. What we want to talk uh, about today is um, we want to talk a little bit about the reasons why we've built Amazon Workmail. Talk to you a little bit about the functionality that um, comes with Amazon Workmail. Give you an overview of the pricing and availability. And then I'll go and hand it over to uh, Milo, who will talk us through how easy it is to get started with Amazon Workmail, um, and then some of the more advanced use cases that uh, might be interesting for you. So um, let's dive right in. Um, when we talk to our customers, one piece of feedback that we've consistently heard is that email has really evolved from a communication tool to an enabler of almost any business process out there. No matter whether you need an, uh, your latest uh, finance figures or you need an update of your most uh, important project, all of these business processes actually rely on email. Um, Next to that, we've heard that a lot of our customers actually treat their inboxes as um, a repository of business information. A lot of people keep uh, documents, spreadsheets, uh, important conversations in their inboxes, which means uh, access to that business critical information needs to be secured. And those two um, requirements combined really drive the complexity of managing uh, infrastructure that is required to uh, run a system like this. So we've really focused on um, building a system that makes it very easy for you to host and run your corporate email and calendar workloads without having the complexity of uh, uh, provisioning these systems and managing them. So that is what Amazon Workmail is. It is uh, an enterprise email and calendaring service that's completely hosted in the cloud. It's very easy to get um, started on Amazon Workmail, as Milo will show us later. Um, it um, is as I said, completely managed. You don't need to worry about um, you know, patching software, provisioning hardware. It doesn't even require you to um, manage EC2 instances, for instance. It's completely transparent. You just go to the AWS console, you sign up for Workmail, and off you go. Um, another important aspect of Workmail is, is that uh, it doesn't require any big upfront investments on your side. Um, the system grows with your needs. It's very easy to provision new mailboxes or tear them down, as we'll see later. As I mentioned before, um, security and data protection is a very uh, important aspect that a lot of enterprises um, uh, worry about today. And so we've built a couple of very interesting features into Amazon Workmail that um, allow you to control and to protect your most business critical data. Uh, one of these features is uh, the integration with uh, Amazon KMS, which is the key management service. And that allows you to generate your own um, encryption keys, which will then in turn be used by Amazon Workmail to encrypt your most um, uh, business critical data. Amazon Workmail um, also allows you to control in which region your, your data is hosted. So you select where you create your organization and we ensure that your data doesn't leave uh, the region that you decide you want to host your data in. We also support um, secure mobile access to your email and to your calendars. Um, in the Amazon um, Management Console, you can define uh, mobile device policies that allow you to um, uh, enforce and restrict certain access on mobile devices, uh, enforce things like screen locks and uh, 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 password strengths and things like this. Workmail also comes with uh, sophisticated um, protection mechanisms for things like malware and spam. So you can rest assured that your users are protected when they access their emails and their calendars. Um, as we talk to our customers, we've heard a lot that emails and calendars really need to be available wherever we are, uh, no matter where I'm on my, whether I'm on my desktop or at my, on my tablet at home or um, you know, on the go and I need my calendar on my phone. So we've built um, access into Amazon Workmail that allows you to um, access your, your calendars and your email from Outlook on a PC or on a Mac, uh, from any modern browser through the web application. Um, we also support um, mobile access and we um, support the majority of the mobile um, platforms out there, so we natively support iOS, Windows Mobile and uh, Android devices. So let's look at uh, some of the more advanced features. We've built native um, uh, integration with uh, Outlook on Windows and macOS. And what it gives you is um, really a native experience without the need to install any additional software. 
Um, you just set up your organization, you spin up your Outlook, you connect it to Workmail, and off you go. We support a full range of features, including things like uh, shared calendars and uh, shared mailboxes. You get a ad global address book that allows you to easily find people within your organization. Uh, we support um, things like resource booking. Everything that you would expect from an enterprise-grade uh, email and calendaring service is available through Workmail. Um, we also support advanced um, delegation schemes. So if you're working with an admin, they can administer your calendar while you read your own email. Um, and we support filtering on the server sites um, to make you more effective of managing uh, your emails. This is a screenshot of our um, web client. As I said before, a lot of our customers um, prefer the lightweight experience of running um, their or uh, managing their email through a browser. And it's a fully featured web application um, that allows you to access your emails and your calendars. You can look at shared calendars. Um, We've also built um, integration with Amazon WorkDocs into this client. That makes it really easy for you to collaborate and co-create uh, um, on content uh, together with your colleagues. So it's very easy to share documents from the convenience of your, of your web application, of your email client. Let's have a look at uh, pricing and availability. As I said before, um, with Amazon Workmail, you don't have big upfront investment. It's a really pay-as-you-go model. So the um, service and the application scales with your needs. There are no long-term commitments. We charge uh, $4 per user per month for a 50 gigabyte mailbox. And we also offer a bundle with Amazon WorkDocs um, uh, that comes in at $6 per user per month. And it gives you a 200 gigabyte storage on Amazon WorkDocs as well. Um, getting started is very easy. Um, we allow a 30-day uh, fr um, free trial for Amazon Workmail. Um, and as I said before, it's uh, very easy to get set up. Um, Milo will work us through that process. But within 10 minutes, you can have a complete enterprise email and calendaring service running. Um, we're currently available in uh, US East, uh, US West, and in EU West. And we're planning to um, add additional regions as we go. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Milo, who's going to work us through the uh, uh, very easy setup uh, process for Amazon Workmail. Uh, if you have an AWS account, go to the console. You can get started with Workmail uh, today. Um, to get started, uh, there are two options uh, that you can do. You can do a quick setup. Uh, which is super easy and, and let you get going in 10 minutes. And you can do a custom setup, which will give you more controls and, and let, uh, enable you to integrate Workman with your existing uh, Active Directory and Exchange environment. Um, so I want to uh, walk you through both setups, what's needed, and what are all the, the technical things we do on the back end uh, uh, to provision uh, Workman for you. So first, uh, let's start with the quick setup. So there are five basic steps uh, for the quick setup. So first of all, you need to create an organization, which is basically the container in, 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 uh, in Workmail, uh, which contains all your users, your mobile devices, your email domains, your distribution groups. Uh, so once the organization is up and running, you can start adding uh, your domains. So you can also provision email addresses uh, for that domain to your users. The next step is, once those domains are added, you create your users, you create your group, your uh, calendar resources, and then you can migrate your uh, existing mailboxes to Workmail. Uh, and after everything is migrated, you want to reconfigure your clients. So that are the basic steps. So let's uh, zoom a bit into those steps. So the quick setup is, is super easy. So here's the, 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 the page, how you can get going. And basically, the only thing what you need to specify is an, what we call an organization alias. And the organization alias so it needs to be a unique name. And that's basically the endpoint, how you access uh, Amazon Workmail uh, by uh, accessing the, the Webmail client. Uh, but that, uh, that domain name is also set up as a, what we call test mail domain. So if you don't want to uh, onboard your own domain names uh, to work now yet, uh, you can use that test domain uh, to test drive the service, basically. So once you fill in the alias, press the Create button. Uh, we will kick off a workflow in the background uh, that will create all the required resources for you. So we spin up a new VPC in your AWS account. Uh, in that VPC, we create a simple AD directory. So work mode is completely relying on the AWS directory service for uh, its users. Uh, so we spin up a simple AD uh, in, that, uh, in that VPC. Once the directory is there, uh, we create a test mail domain. Um, so uh, for all 
uh, incoming and outgoing email, we are using Amazon SES. So the test mail domain that, you crea that we create for you is also in the Amazon SES console. Uh, and finally, we create uh, what we call a service default key in the AWS key management service. So that's our, all the resources we create. And once this is all created in your AWS account, you can basically start creating your users and accessing the, the work mode service. Now, so typically the quick setup, what we see at customers, this is really for smaller organizations, 25 users, uh, where you do full, uh, the full management through the, through the AWS console. And uh, people that want to try it out, uh, they also use this setup. So the next setup uh, or the next step is uh, basically adding your, your corporate domains uh, to Amazon Workmail. Um, so in the uh, Workmail console, you can add your domains. Uh, per organization, you can uh, uh, add uh, right now a uh, max of 100 domains. Uh, so you can really use multiple domains. Uh, for example, uh, for our team, uh, we have Amazon.com addresses. We have Amazon.nl addresses. Um, so we can just assign multiple addresses of those domains uh, to our users uh, or groups. Um, so how does the whole uh, adding of a domain uh, work in Amazon Workmail? So you put in your domain name um, and um, uh, you click the next button and that will basically give you this page. And uh, the first uh, step you need to do before you can start using the domain is we need to verify the ownership of the domain. Um, and we do that by basically uh, giving you a DNS uh, text record that you need to uh, put in uh, in your DNS server. And uh, once we have validated that the, uh, that the DNS record is there, the domain is basically becomes active and you can start using that domain uh, for your users. Uh, next to that, there are a bunch of other DNS settings uh, you need to configure. Um, um, free records, you see there, the CNAME records are for DKIM signing. So we sign every outgoing email uh, with the DKIM standard. So uh, to have a higher reputation uh, when you send out emails. Uh, we have an auto discover record, basically for easy configuration of your Outlook client and your mobile devices. And of course, an MX record to make sure that uh, the email is delivered to the work mode service. Uh, the last two will, um, you have to configure then once the migration is complete and basically you want to uh, uh, let Workmo accept all your incoming email. So once the domains are set up, you can start provisioning your users. In the quick setup, um, although we use the simple AD, you don't need any AD management tools. You could for creating of the users, uh, but you can also do the whole user creation uh, and group creation uh, through the Workmo console. Um, so you can add phone numbers, address details to your users. They had it all propagated to the, to the address book that you have in Outlook or in your mobile device. Um, so you don't need any, the, although we use the simple ID, you don't do anything with the simple ID. It's completely managed uh, through the Workmail console. Okay, um, I first want to go uh, switch to the custom setup and uh, come back to the uh, migration and uh, configuration of the clients after I discuss the, the custom setup. So the custom setup gives you much more flexibility when you want to deploy Amazon Workmail. Um, so you have the flexibility that you use your own VPC. You can uh, integrate Workmail with your on-prem directory uh, by using the... Um, uh, the AD connector that the AWS directory service provides. And you can select your own um, customer master key uh, that you created in uh, the key management service. Um, so this is really the, uh, the setup that customers that currently run an exchange environment or have an uh, AD infrastructure, uh, most customers will use this, uh, this setup because basically you can use your uh, existing AD users in, in Workmail. Um, so, quick overview on the steps. So, we need to create the VPC. So, we don't do that for you. Uh, maybe you have your, um, you have extended your on-prem network already to the AWS cloud. So, you can use that VPC uh, as well for Workmail or for the AD connector. Uh, you need to set up the AD connector in the directory service console, and then basically you have the, a similar process as with the quick, quick setup, where you create the organization with those uh, resources uh, at your domains. Uh, instead of creating the users in the Workmail console. So you basically enable your existing users through our console. So this is how the custom setup looks. Uh, so it's also 
pretty straightforward. Uh, so you can select your directory, you can select the encryption key, uh, but as I said earlier, the creation of the directory and the creation of the keys need to happen in uh, the, the service consoles of the uh, directory service uh, or the key management service. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the integration with your on-prem uh, directory. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how much people are familiar with the uh, directory service. Um, so uh, in the directory service, um, when you set up an AD connector, uh, we basically, an AD connector is basically a proxy through your on-prem uh, uh, environment. So you need to set up a VPC and you need to extend that VPC or basically extend your on-prem network to your VPC by setting up a direct connect or a VPN connection. So once you have that, the VPN uh, and the VPC setup uh, configured, we need to have two subnets in that VPC because the AD connector is set up uh, redundant, avail high available uh, by running in two different uh, availability zones. Um, um, so once you have the subnet, you can spin up the AD connector, and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So you put in the DNS records uh, of your uh, on-prem Active Directory, uh, you specify service account, uh, and then you can create the AD connector. And once that's uh, uh, becoming active, you can use it in the workmobile console and, and just select it. So the nice thing of the whole AD connector setup uh, is um, that you don't need any local software uh, on your Active Directory to replicate your users to the cloud. It's just using your existing network to connect back to your on-prem uh, directory. So this is basically how it looks like uh, in, in the architecture. So you have the two AD connector instances uh, in the different availability zones. You have the VPN connection back to your uh, on-prem uh, network. And the AD connector is just talking the, the AD protocol, so LDAP, uh, Kerberos for authentication, uh, back to your on-prem uh, AD. Um, and work mills basically connecting via internal APIs to the AD connector. Um, so once the um, uh, directory is set up, Workmo is using the AD connector for uh, four different things. So first of all, to provision a new user, you can just select it from, from your existing user list and give a, give a mailbox for that user. Um, you can also reuse or use your existing groups in your Active Directory, security groups, distribution groups, uh, and then they enable those for Workmail uh, so you have them all in your uh, global address book available. If you make changes in your on-prem directory, so the whole user management, group management still um, happens through your, the, the tools you use today, uh, whether it's the uh, Active Directory uh, management console or maybe you have built uh, uh, HR tools that uh, do the whole user provisioning uh, into the Active Directory in the end. Uh, so when you do changes through those tools, those get automatically replicated to, to Amazon Workmail, so your address book is always, uh, has always the latest information. Um, and of course, authentication requests are also proxied back to your on-prem ID. So your users can just log in with their existing user credentials uh, to access the Workmail uh, service. So that's the, uh, the whole directory integration. So um, after the directory is created, you select the, the directory in the dropdown, and now you can uh, move on to the encryption key. Um, so in the drop-down, what we will show you, uh, show you there, if you created keys in the KMS service, uh, you will see them in the, in the list. Uh, there's also a service default key. Uh, so basically the key that we have with the, uh, with the uh, quick setup, that's also available uh, for the custom setup if you don't want to manage your own keys. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the key management integration. So... Um, as Tom already said in, uh, in, his, uh, in his slides, um, one of the, uh, the unique things of Amazon Workmo is that we integrate with the key management service, uh, and this is, gives customers completely control of, the, of, of their data, because your mailbox data is encrypted with the key that you control in your AWS account. Um, so if you don't want to manage those keys and just basically the whole rotation, AWS should do that for you, you can use the service default key. If you want to have much more controls over those keys and uh, set certain policies on those keys, you can create a key in the, AW, uh, in the KMS service and use that for Workmail. 
for both keys, you can edit, uh, uh, enable uh, uh, audit logging in CloudTrail, so you see all the actions, have all the decrypt actions that WorkMill is doing on the mailboxes in your CloudTrail logs. So how's WorkMill integrating with KMS? So once we do the setup, basically WorkMill gets a grant on that key so we can perform decryption actions against that key so we can send you the, the data back to your device. So um, let's dive a bit deeper. Um, so we have that key in your AWS account. So we have the master key, but we don't use that key to encrypt every email. Um, so there's a whole key hierarchy uh, uh, that we use in Amazon WorkMail. So the master key is used for the organization, and you have always only one master key for the whole organization. But as soon as you provision a new mailbox in Amazon WorkMail, we create an, a mailbox key for that mailbox. So that's an asymmetric key pair, a public key and a private key. Um, and that's used for uh, the encryption of the, um, of the, the message or the data key. So for each item that you put in your mailbox, whether it's an email or a calendar item and contact, all those items are encrypted with a, with a data key. So that's a symmetric AES key um, uh, that, we, that we generate when you save an item. So that key is encrypted with the public key of the mailbox. Um, so that's how the encryption works. If you start to synchronize your mobile device, your Outlook client, we have to decrypt the information. Uh, and we basically, because the private key of the mailbox is encrypted with the, uh, the master key, we basically call into the KMS service and ask to decrypt the private key. And then once we have the private key, we can decrypt the message, uh, the data keys, uh, and send the, the data back to your uh, uh, client. So that's in overview how the whole encryption model works in, in Amazon WorkMail. So now we have done the whole setup. Uh, here we have the directory, we have uh, the encryption, and we are up and running with our organization. Um, and here with the active, or the active Directory integration, we can enable our users, uh, and every user that you enable for WorkMail is automatically available in the global address book. So, but what we hear from customers, uh, especially when you have already a bigger exchange environment, I don't, I cannot migrate in a single weekend or in a, in a day to WorkMill. So you want to slowly migrate to Amazon WorkMill. And uh, that's why I'm very excited to talk about the new feature which is coming in the next uh, couple of months, uh, which is interoperability support. And interoperability support gives you three different things. So first of all, it will provide you with a unified address book between the two email systems. So between your exchange system and Amazon WorkMail, you have a unified address book. Um, next to that, there's email routing capabilities. So once you receive an email on your on-prem system, it's automatically uh, uh, routed to Amazon WorkMail. And the last one, and I think that's the most important one for, for users uh, combined with the first one, is really the calendar free busy lookups. So if a user is on WorkMail and he wants to plan a meeting with a user on the exchange environment, uh, he should be able to, to see the free busy information of that user. So that are the three features uh, that uh, interoperability uh, support will provide you. So how can you set it up um, uh, in Amazon WorkMail? So the first step is that we need to have all your domains in Amazon WorkMill. Because we start to synchronize all your existing users uh, from Exchange uh, to WorkMill, and we set them up uh, with their email account in WorkMill already, we need to have the domains available in, in the service. The next step is that for the whole free, free busy interoperability, we need to create uh, user accounts uh, in Exchange that basically WorkMill is using to do free busy lookups in, uh, uh, in Exchange. Uh, and for Exchange, so that's the third item, we set up a, what they call an availability address uh, space, which will basically redirect free busy requests for users that are on the WorkMill service to the, to the WorkMill uh, EWS endpoint. So that are the steps that you configure, and the last step is that you enable the interoperability support in the WorkMill console, and when you enable it, you need to specify the, uh, the user, had the service account that you created in, uh, in Exchange. Uh, uh, you need to specify the EWS endpoint, had the, the credentials of that user, um, um, and then interoperability support works. So once it's enabled, it will start to synchronize uh, all the users that you have in Exchange, so all your 
uh, Exchange users, groups, resources uh, to Amazon Workmail. So they will automatically show up in your uh, global address book. Um, same like what I mentioned earlier, uh, when you do changes to those users, uh, also changes to email addresses, for example, in the Exchange Management Console will also be replicated to Workmail. Um, and uh, to enable a user for Workmail, uh, so those users get replicated, uh, all those Exchange users get replicated to Workmail, but they don't get a mailbox yet. So if you want to migrate a user, you will basically enable uh, the user that you want to migrate for Amazon Workmail, so a mailbox is provisioned, the keys are provisioned for that mailbox, and then you can basically start the migration process. Um, so let's talk a little bit about email routing in, uh, in, uh, in, in interoperable uh, setup. Um, so in this um, uh, diagram, uh, we have the user John who's migrated to, uh, to Amazon Workmail and we want to set up the email routing um, so John still receives all the email uh, for the example.com domain. So um, important in the interoperability setup is that the, uh, right now the exchange environment remains the primary SMTP server. Uh, so that's important in this whole architecture. Um, so what you need to do uh, after users migrated, you basically convert the mailbox in Exchange where you remove the, uh, the mailbox of the user after he's successfully migrated and you convert the user to a, a mail-enabled user. So mail-enabled user uh, is, is basically an entry in Exchange, it doesn't have a mailbox and it has a target address which is basically the, the email address where we need to uh, route the emails to. And as you see in the domain, it's example.awsapps.com. AWSapps.com is basically the test domain that you will get uh, once you set up your work more organization. And that, the, the, S, the MX record, uh, is, is pointing to the Workmail uh, service. So basically, by setting this uh, target address, uh, once John receives an email, it's automatically forwarded to the target address, uh, which is received by Workmail. Um, and because John has a Workmail, as a primary email address, his normal corporate email address, and as an alias that, uh, uh, the, the email address with the test mail domain, he receives the email, uh, but it gets automatically resolved to the primary email address. So people, hey, users don't see uh, that email alias, they only use their uh, the primary email address. Also, when they send out email, we always use the primary email address. So for the people in the outside world, they have no idea that that person is uh, on, on Amazon Workmail. So that's how the whole email uh, routing works. Uh, let's look at the uh, calendar free busy interoperability. Um, so as part of the whole setup process, we set up those service accounts so uh, the, the work mode and the exchange system basically can uh, uh, connect with each other. So in this case, um, uh, John wants to do a free busy lookup uh, for Mary who's uh, migrated already. Um, so just like what we had on the previous slide, um, had a user who's migrated has that target address. And basically the target uh, address is also used for free busy lookups. Uh, because we set up the uh, availability address space for that uh, domain, uh, the free busy lookups will happen against the work mail uh, endpoint. So in this case, John will do a free busy lookup in his Outlook client. Um, uh, the user is resolved to the target address. Uh, Exchange knows, hey, for that, that target domain, I need to go to the Workmail endpoint. Uh, that uh, user will look up the free busy and it's returned to the client. Um, so um, uh, after, the, uh, after the interoperability support is configured, it's, it's pretty straightforward uh, to use for the user. Um, so that's the whole interoperability support. Um, so once that's set up, you, uh, uh, set up and configured, you can start migrating your users to Workmail. Um, so for the migration, there are two different uh, options. So Workmail uh, comes with a basic migration tool uh, to migrate Exchange mailboxes or Office 365 mailboxes to Workmail. Um, if you have an, a different email solution, um, we will soon provide third part integration with third party uh, email providers that have um, uh, support for most uh, email platforms, uh, whether it's Google Apps, uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, maybe still customers with Lotus Notes, so they have support or generic IMAP servers. So they have uh, 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 support for all those uh, email, um, um, email solutions. 
Um, so the work mode migration tool is, um, is a tool that you have to run uh, on a Windows machine. So it's a tool, uh, uh, it's a pretty basic tool, and how it basically works is you point it to the Exchange server with an admin uh, user who has access to all the mailboxes in the Exchange environment. You point it to WorkMail with an administrator user, and it's basically... Um, um, you specify a, a, a list of users, has so a, a CSV file with um, a source user, destination user, so the email addresses of the, of the users. Um, and then once the tool is configured, you would just run it and it will start synchronizing uh, the mailboxes uh, for you. And you can just keep it running. Uh, if uh, the migration is complete, but you just leave it running, it will synchronize the latest changes. Um, 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 yeah, it continues uh, synchronizing the latest uh, changes it detects on the, on the Exchange server side. That's how the migration tool uh, works. So a few best practices. Uh, so it's a Windows-based tool. It's using the, 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 the Outlook internal, uh, the, the MAPI uh, standard for connecting to the both, uh, both systems. Um, so we recommend to run the, the migration tool as close to the work more endpoints as possible. So uh, run it in Easy2 on a Windows instance, launch your workspace, install it on your workspaces, run it there. Uh, you can also run it on-prem if you don't want to uh, set up an, uh, a Windows box in Easy2. Um, so that will give you the low, lowest latency and, and the best performance. If you want to have higher throughput, you can also launch the migration tool on multiple instances or spin up the migration tool multiple times with different lists of, of users. Um, so you have uh, more parallel uh, sessions. Um, so once the migration is complete, um, we basically have to um, um, yeah, finalize the migration. Uh, and there are a few steps for that. So first of all, I earlier said that we, uh, for the uh, configuration of your Outlook client, uh, whether it's uh, the Mac client or the Windows client, and also most of the mobile devices, we are supporting the auto-discover protocol. Um, so um, to let the, uh, the clients connect to the work more endpoint, uh, you have to set up an autodiscover uh, DNS uh, uh, record, which is basically uh, autodiscover.yourdomain.com will point to our, is a CNAME record to our autodiscover uh, endpoint. Um, because uh, maybe your Exchange server is still running uh, while all the users have migrated, so Exchange also has an auto-discover server, um, and we need to basically turn off the, the local auto-discover, otherwise your clients will still connect uh, to the local Exchange server. So that's the second item here on the slide where we basically turn off uh, the local auto-discover, so it's always using the, the DNS record uh, to um, uh, connect to the work more endpoints. Um, then switch the MX, yeah, so after all users are migrated, uh, you can uh, finally uh, switch the MX record, so work will start receiving your email and deliver it to the mailboxes. And then you can also turn off interoperability support, which basically means you can completely decommission your exchange environment, and you can do the whole provisioning of your users through the, through the work mode console. Or I say all, all provisioning of users, really managing the work mode specific settings, managing the email addresses for the users and the groups in work mode, but the actual user creation, group membership, managing still happens in your Active Directory. Um, so once this is all done, you can decommission your on-prem uh, environment and you're completely uh, hosted on WorkMail. Um, so as I said, if you want to start using WorkMail, uh, if, if you're interested, haven't played around with it uh, yet, uh, go to the console. Uh, you have already access, although it's still in preview, uh, it's accessible for every AWS account. There's no whitelisting uh, involved anymore.